Hey guys, Rolando Rodriguez here with xgains.com. We've got workouts that work, eats that satisfy, and everything else you need to reach your lifestyle goals. about ketosis. I've touched on the topic a number of times when discussing other eating and dieting approaches that I've taken throughout the years, but I've gotten a couple of emails uh, requesting a video specifically on ketosis. Our body typically uses glucose as its main source of energy, carbs, right? The carbs that we intake, the body takes the glucose from it and stores the glucose in our system as glycogen in our liver and in our muscles. As I said before, the glycogen that's stored in our muscles can only be utilized by the muscles. So it's only utilized if you work out. And yes, the more muscles you have, the more glycogen you can store in your body. The more muscles you have, the more opportunity you have, if you're using those muscles, to store the carbs that we're eating inside our muscle as opposed to converting that unused carbs into fat. Our liver utilizes the glycogen throughout the day to provide our body with the energy and specifically our brain with the energy it needs to do our everyday function, like sitting at the office, running numbers in our heads, whatever it is we're doing, walking to the bathroom, those type of things, right? And so then the glycogen storage in your liver will start to deplete like any, you know, three to six hours, which is typically when we start to get hungry anyways. Our brain's saying, hey, we're using this stuff. We want to refuel the tank. Let's go ahead and eat. But now if you weren't to eat and you were to continue to do your typical daily activities, your glycogen stores in your liver would deplete anywhere from one to three days, depending on, on you know, how your body actually functions. So once our body has no more sugars available, what's it going to turn to? What well, turns to pretty much utilizing the fat that we have as stored with a little bit of our protein to start to make energy. Now, when our body is using our fat as its main source or fuel for energy, it produces ketones. The byproduct of that process is ketones. And when you're producing ketones and using fat as your main source of energy, that's when you're in ketosis. The way you get into ketosis is by re drastically reducing and almost eliminating the carbs that you're intaking on a daily basis. We wanna keep the carbs anywhere from 50 to 70 grams or below. And a lot of people out there gotta keep it 50 and under. So what does that mean? Well, that means that you really can't even have a cup of rice, right? Because if you're trying to do the ketosis approach to dieting, specifically the low carb, high fat approach, you're going to want to be getting most of your carbs from the vegetables that you're eating, right? And at 50 grams is not that much. And a lot of people will have a cup of rice, a couple of pieces of bread, two fruits a day, and you know, a dessert. You're easily getting up near 200 grams for the typical regular person. So you're pretty much going from 200 to 50 or under. And that's a pretty drastic cut. Now, how long does it take to get into the ketosis? It depends on the person. Some people will get into it in about a week, other people two, other people four, six weeks. So it depends. If you practice intermittent fasting and you work out in high intensity, you could get into ketosis in a couple of days versus a week or two or up to six weeks if you're just changing what you eat and reducing your carb intake. So it is a drastic difference. If you practice intermittent fasting and work out on a regular basis and work out intensely, we're talking days versus weeks. That being said, how do you test for ketosis? You have to pee on a strip, and that's what people used to do when they were doing the Atkins approach. Peeing on a strip is not as accurate as the machines today, which are pretty much along the same lines of the machines that are used to test your blood level sugar if you're a diabetic, specific machines that you can buy that will test your blood sugar and then your ketone levels. So you prick your finger, you put a piece of blood on the strip and you put it, you insert it into the machine. The machine itself is not that expensive, but where they get you is this, the testing strips get pretty expensive. So how do I know if I'm getting or approaching ketosis? Well, to be honest with you, there's always a phase. If I'm doing high carbs, right, and just eating regular amounts of carbs and not worrying about my carb intake, when I go to the low carb, high fat approach, there's this sort of withdrawal process, 
okay? You get withdrawal symptoms from withdrawing from the sugars that are in your body. For me, those symptoms last about two days. So when I start to go into ketosis, what I do is I have that last you know, meal before I go to low carb, high fat approach the next day, I'll have that meal. And then I'll work out the next day fasted completely. And I won't eat until dinner the next day, right? So I had dinner the night before, I woke up in the morning, trained fasted, and then the whole day without eating anything. And at the end of the day, I have a salad that's about 400 calories and are actually anywhere from four to 600 calories. And that salad doesn't go over 30 grams of carbs. And that sort of jump starts the system. Well, the next day when I go to work out, what happens? I feel a little bit sluggish, but not there's not that drastic of a difference, okay? You can push through it if you train your mind. But if it's your first time at this, your body's gonna be like, whoa, what's going on? And you're gonna actually start to have cravings for sugary foods, um, specifically breads, carbs, the, you know, the starches, the grains, the fruits, and especially the desserts if, you, if you're all about that, right? So you're gonna feel these withdrawal symptoms and you might have a headache, as a matter of fact, um, from withdrawing from the sugar. Now, a way to counteract that headache is what they're figuring out now is to just add a bit of sodium. So you might have some chicken broth with some salt, add some extra salt to your eggs, things like that. What does my typical uh, low carb, high fat diet look like? Well, there's a couple of things I wanna, you know, and caveats I wanna put out there, right? The Atkins diet didn't really work because it was too high in protein. If you're trying to get into ketosis, you wanna check the amount of proteins that you're intaking, okay? So you wanna keep it to about three quarters of your body weight. So if you weigh 100 pounds, you're not gonna to wanna to eat more than 75 grams of protein. The reason why is because your body's gonna realize, wait a minute, I'm getting a ton of protein, I'm gonna to start to use the protein and break that down as energy as opposed to the fat. But if you're giving your body more fat than protein, your body's gonna say, well, this is what we have an abundance of, let's use the fat. So how much fat should you eat? Well, you should eat almost anywhere from 60 to 80% of your calories, your total caloric intake needs to come from fat. And so then the carbs, as we discussed, need to be 50 grams or less. Let's say you weigh 100 pounds. First, you set your protein. You know you need to get three quarters of your protein intake. That's gonna be 75 grams of protein a day, okay? Then you know that you want 50 grams or less of carbs a day because you're trying to get into ketosis. So right now, as I've talked before in another video, I have the link down below, we know that we have protein at 75 grams and we have carbs at 50 grams. Each one of those are four calories per gram. So at 75 grams of protein times four calories is gonna give us 300 calories from protein. So 300 calories from protein that we need to consume or 75 grams per day. Now the carbs is 50 grams of carbs per day and it's times four calories because every gram of carb has four calories just like the proteins. So we have 200 calories from carbs that we want to eat per day. So the rest of the calories for your daily caloric intake that you're trying to hit, be it a high caloric intake or a low caloric intake if you're trying to lose weight, needs to come from fat. What type of fats do I eat? Well, I eat eggs, a lot of eggs. Egg yolk and the egg whites. Do not throw away the yolk. Avocados, of course, olive oil, olives. You got butter. I personally eat grass-fed butter that you can get at, at Costco. I think it's Kerry Gold that I purchased that I like. Fatty meats, you don't have to cut the fat away. When I'm not on a low-carb, high-fat approach to eating, I don't stick to the, and I don't crave the fatty skin of the chicken. But a couple of days in, especially a week into low-carb, high-fat, my body is craving it and I don't get disgusted by it. I actually want it. So you, you're gonna notice that too. Now, what I've realized is that some people, and it depends on the certain person, will love and their body will respond to the low carb, high fat approach. And their body will start burning fat for fuel constantly. And they're gonna drop uh, fat like it's nothing. Other people don't respond too well to it. Regardless of whether or not you're responding to it, you won't really know for anywhere from two to six weeks. So I would say at least try it for three weeks and see how you feel. And if you feel great, keep it up. Because if you're not losing weight, then you just adjust your caloric intake. You drop it down a little bit more. 
okay? But you have to stick it out. Now, it's true, some people will respond better to others and some people won't really like it. I personally can lose weight on a lower carb, low fat approach to eating by reducing my cal caloric intake, but I'd rather personally do it on a low carb, high fat. You see, because you're on low, lower carb, low fat, I might be eating 200 grams or 150 grams of carbs a day, but only like 10 percent of my calories coming from fat. I personally feel better the more fat I eat. And it might be because I intermittent fast and it might be because I train fasted, but that's my body. I feel better and the weight loss is still there. And as a matter of fact, once I'm kicking on all cylinders, I actually think I look a bit bigger on the low carb, high fat ketosis approach versus the lower carb, low fat approach. Anyways, I hope this video has been helpful. I'm sure we're gonna have uh, a lot more discussions on this topic in the future. I'm actually currently doing the low carb, high fat approach to eating. Uh, I am currently in a program that was 60 days and I tried the program's approach to eating for the first 30 days and now for the next 30 days I'm doing my own low carb, high fat and I'm gonna see how that goes and sort of compare the two. But for now, this is Rolando Rodriguez with xgains.com. That's uh, x dash. That's the symbol, not the word, gains.com. Hoping you guys have a fantastic week. Peace.